Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So tonight I wanted to uh, dive into a topic I've been wanting to talk about for some time now. Um, I've said this in previous videos. I've got a lot of new stuff coming up, um, topics that I really haven't really touched upon much over the life of the 11 years of the blog. But um, venturing over into YouTube, there's definitely a lot of topics that I want to get into. Uh, can, y'all want to contribute to the conversation, spark a conversation. Because I've been hearing a lot of this discussion online from um, mostly African-American males who are, you know, opining, sharing their opinions about traveling overseas, uh, looking for the right one, looking for the right woman. And, you know, I've seen a lot of back and forth and, you know, I have my own opinions on some of the things that people are saying. You know, some things I agree with, some things I just totally disagree with. But, you know, the point is to open up the floor and have this discussion. Um, you know, this really all started within what I've come to know as the black manosphere. And then as men across races and uh, ethnicities have come to understand, like, well, this is not a, just an issue that affects black men in the United States or white men in the United States or whoever. It's... We, you know, every group of men, men and women have certain similarities and differences and where there are areas where we disagree, we just have to disagree. But then there are certain areas that, you know, we can all benefit from the discussion. You know, it's funny because some people that I'll check out on YouTube or podcast or whatever, just wherever they might have their material you know, I from time to time, I'll even listen to like a, a white nationalist. And, you know, I listen to a white nationalist for a little while and they'll go through some concepts and some history that I had never heard before. And, I was, you know, a lot of things I can understand, a lot of things I can actually agree with. It's just when they go into certain directions in terms of their attitude towards race, that's when, OK, look, I can rock with you on this, this and that. But then you move into this topic. I can't really get with you. I just think that um, definitely uh, when we when we talk about certain topics that I think a lot of us have more in common than we actually know. Um, we just there's there's certain uh, barriers I'll say from us being able to really agree on everything, and I don't think that's ever going to happen where we can agree on everything. But you know, I'm open minded enough to be able to look at the perspective of somebody who might be outside of my group and say, okay, these are things that I can, you know, I can rock with that. There's other things I, I cannot. So I've seen a lot of exchange going on between uh, what non-black men are saying, what black men are saying, and then other people, uh, you know, other men, are, you know, outside of just the black and white, uh, uh, just the two groups of, of say black and white is, you know, men all over the world can agree on many of the same topics. Um, so it's just something I wanted to contribute to. I, I'm, I'm really digging the conversation. And as Brazil keeps coming up, and I've been, you know, my experiences with Brazil are, are 22 years now, I thought that there would be a few things that I could definitely contribute to this conversation. So today I'm doing a piece. It's actually kind of like a reaction that I call for the men that choose to leave the passport bros, the view from Brazil. Okay. So this video it actually came about because of something that one of my friends sent me, I don't know, maybe about two weeks ago, he just sent me a video. Let me just, you know, get into it because everything that I'm talking about is actually going to come out uh, throughout this post and now video. So let's, let's just get into it. You see, uh, I think um, the picture that I posted here kind of really says everything. Get your passport, bro. Um, <laughs> I got my passport way back in 2000. So, you know, I, if you want to create a label that says passport, bro, I can't actually consider myself 
part of that movement because, you know, like I said, I've been traveling to Brazil for, you know, since the year 2000. So I've had my passport for, you know, what, 22 years now. Um, so as somebody who's been going back and forth to Brazil for many years, uh, lived in Brazil for nine years, and now I'm back, you know, I, I got a lot. I have a lot of opinions on some of the things that are being said online. Um, so let me just get into this because some really interesting things are going to come out of this. I think this is going to be probably a two or three part video because it's just so much to talk about. I'm actually, the name of this uh, video and blog post is actually uh, influenced by a video that I saw a couple of weeks ago. And I actually, I'm using the same title for, for this post that I'm making, this video that I'm making. So let's just get into it. Four, the men that choose to leave the passport bros the view from Brazil. So one day last week, a friend of mine sent me a video. We often share videos with each other, either because they are genuinely intriguing. They speak about the condition of the society uh, to keep up with things we're both interested in or just to spark a conversation. Along with the video, he asked if I had already seen it. Clicking on the link, I didn't really know what to expect, although the title gave me a clear clue. Uh, the men that choose to leave the passport bros at better biatches by a YouTuber named uh, Filipina P. So for several months, I've watched videos by African-American men sharing their opinions and experiences in terms of traveling overseas in search of women that they click with better. After several months of these types of videos circulating on YouTube, soon Response videos from African-Americans, African-American women started to appear online. I mean, if you can call them response videos. After having seen a few too many, I came to the conclusion that these videos were just opportunities to spit venom. Some of the comments that I saw on some of these videos represented the attitudes that have led many black American men to consider getting a passport and traveling overseas in the first place. The so-called response videos that I saw just didn't make sense to me. I mean, if you really don't care about these men choosing to explore other countries looking for Miss Wright, why waste time making videos insulting them and making baseless accusations? I mean, really? Did any of these women take any time to do any research before they made such ridiculous comments? Listening to these comments, I just felt that the women were just basically hating. I mean, what other reason could there be? The men who are seeking to travel overseas aren't doing so out of a desire to make uh, black American women mad, sad, or even get some sort of revenge. Many, if not most of them, are simply frustrated with the relationships and women that they're dealing with. As such, they really ain't going to give any Fs about the videos that these women made. Passport Bros videos are just these men's way of saying, I'm out. There's a whole world out there and I want to know about it. As a man who obtained a passport 22 years ago, I understand this feeling. When I first started traveling to Brazil in the year 2000, it wasn't a thing of meeting a different kind of woman. I've said this numerous times over the years. My interest in Brazil was learning about another population of people of African descent that were descendants of enslaved Africans and how the black experience played out in a whole different country and culture. Some of the comments I've heard from various black American women regarding black American men reminded me of some of the comments I've heard over the years. Uh, before I started visiting Brazil for the first time in September of 2000, I had done nine months worth of research and even learned a little bit of Portuguese. At that time, I remember one black woman I knew asking why I was researching Brazil so much. In her view, if she wanted to visit somewhere, she'd simply buy a plane ticket and go. That's real smart, I thought. So. A country could be in the middle of a civil war and, they, and there I would be in the middle of it because I decided to just go. Or maybe a certain country could have a reputation for snatching up Americans because the citizens believed all American tourists were rich. This is something that uh, I remember from maybe about 2004, somewhere between 2005, 2006, when I was uh, in San Diego and I was considering crossing the border over to Mexico and people were just telling me like, you know, this is not a good time. It's kind of dangerous for Americans to, you know, uh, travel across the border right now. So I, I held back. I still haven't been able to make it to Mexico, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to another country that you've never been to. Maybe you don't know much about. It's definitely worth 
taking some time to learn a little bit about what's going on in that country, which is um, which is definitely what I did before I decided I wanted to, to visit Brazil. So with this with this in mind, I thought I would pose a response to a few of the women featured in Filipina P's video, because some of the comments struck me as just pure haterade. Like the women who made the comment to me, I bet most of these women hadn't bothered to do any research before making such comments. But just to be sure, allow me to respond to a few of these comments. Passport bros go to third world countries and purchase little girls and turn her into a breeding mare. They're little girls. You're sick. So purchase little girls. Where did that come from? I've spoken to numerous black American men who were interested in going to Brazil. These men had seen videos of beautiful Brazilian women, and they made it very clear that if they could, they would love to holler at some of those voluptuous, full grown women. I mean, that's what they saw in hip hop videos made by rappers like Ja Rule and Snoop Dogg, as well as the uh, Carnival video showing gyrating hips and nearly naked Brazilian women. In general, black American men love thick, curvy women and underage girls simply don't fit the bill. Black women, are you ready? Apparently there's a group of, you guessed it, black men who have grown weary of the quote control that black women have over them. So they've decided to seek dominance elsewhere. And that's in the form of traveling to third world countries to seek a bride. What's at play here is that these dusty, mediocre at best so-called men have finally come to the realization that black women are no longer willing to settle for the bare minimum and are choosing to stay single and maintain their peace. If divesting to desperate and disenfranchised women is so great, why do you all have to make an announcement, a grand announcement? Oh, I know why. Because you actually think that this will hurt black women. So, sayonara, arrivederci, adios. Okay, so I can't speak for all of the black men who traveled to Brazil, but I will say that the ones I've known were far from dusty. They were former NBA players, television producers, Wall Street businessmen and financial advisors, journalists, electricians and entrepreneurs. I didn't see anything dusty or mediocre about them. In terms of black American women not willing to settle for the bare minimum, the vast majority of African-American men earn about $46,000 per year. Black men making over six figures per year is somewhere between five to 10%. If I would, from what I heard, it was about 6%. Uh, so if black women seek black men, uh, their chances of getting one of these men is very slim as so many women want them and there's so few of them to go around. On the other hand, if a black man travels to Brazil where $1 is currently worth five of Brazil's currency, the heal, earning $50,000 per year would convert to a quarter of a million heais, and this would place him among Brazil's elites. In the U.S., everyone wants to attain $1 million, but if he only had $200,000 to $250,000 in Brazil, he becomes a millionaire. Think about it. If an American had an online job that paid him in dollars and he moved to Brazil, he would be able to have a much higher standard of living than if he were to remain in the, remain in the United States. As Mos Def once said, it's all mathematics. So um, let me talk about, a. I wanted to, as I was going through this article, I wanted to bring forward some of the documentation and some of the articles that kind of back up what I'm saying. So let me see. This is a, a, um, a report that I found that just shows how many Brazilians actually live outside of Brazil. Um, looks like it's at the it's at a peak at this point. Um, you know, with the uh, financial crisis that had happened some years ago, I noticed that a lot of Brazilians were coming back home, but a lot of people are are continuing to make their home outside of Brazil. So this is something I'm going to get into as I keep talking in, during this video. So if Black American women are choosing to stay single, more power to you. But don't hate on the black men that want to find the one. In terms of the comment, desperate and disenfranchised women, I would say that there are many Brazilian women who would like to live in another country. That's actually true. Um, in fact, according to statistics, there are more than 4.2 million Brazilians living outside of the country, the highest number ever. 
According to a recent report, 47% of Brazilians age 15 to 29 would like to live abroad to improve their life chances. So this is the graph that I was speaking on here. I, I don't remember what site I took this from, but it says, it just basically says in 2020, there were uh, 4.2 million uh, Brazilians who are living overseas, uh, a number equal to a little less than 2% of the Brazilian population. So the community of Brazilians in abroad, living abroad grew 54.9% between 2015 and 2020. So it is true. There are a lot of Brazilians who would like to live overseas and who, in fact, do live overseas. And this age bracket between 15 and 29, this is, according to a report, 47% of these young people desire, they want to live abroad to improve their conditions of life. So this is not to say that it's not true. There are a lot of Brazilians who, who do, in fact, live overseas. Two percent of the entire Brazilian population lives in other countries. Um, but I've just in my experience, I've talked to a lot of Brazilians who have no desire to live outside of the country. A lot of people don't really like the way America, the United States is presented in news reports. There's, there's several reasons. I mean, I've known num numerous people who, you know, it would be cool to visit, but I don't think I would want to live in the United States. I know that sounds unbelievable, but that's just my experience. I, everybody in Brazil is not in love with the United States. So take it from somebody who's been busy, who's interacted with Brazilians for 22 years. Sure, there are people who desire, who dream, who would love, you know, I have my own experience with, with, with people uh, how much they they desire to move out of the country. I, I have my own stories. I'm not going to get into that right now. But it's just to say that everybody doesn't want to live in the United States. A lot of some people do. I have an article coming up that I call, that, there's a nickname that uh, this website, I don't know if this website actually created the term, but they were using this term called Maria Passaporte. Just This is just a nickname for Brazilian women who would like to hook up with a, a gringo, a foreigner, and so that they can go back to, and live with their country so they can get out of Brazil. There, there is a sufficient number. I'm just saying it, it's, in, it's an exaggeration to believe that every Brazilian wants to leave the country because, I mean, think about if you want to leave another country, move to another country, you would leave your whole family behind. You know, a lot of people are not willing to do that. So I think that's is partially true, but it's not fully true. You know, I would think there would probably be more Brazilians living overseas if they really wanted to. It really comes down to, do they have even the financial condi conditions to make a transition to another country? So anyway, I, I don't like that stereotype because I know that there's a lot of Brazilians who have no desire to live in the United States. It's kind of a myth in a way. On the other hand, in my experience, I've known numerous Brazilians who've expressed no desire to live in the U.S. Many see Americans as arrogant, don't appreciate how the U.S. bullies other countries or the impact on global or the impact that America has, you know, throughout the world, we'll just say uh, the global American influence. I felt this sentiment, particularly during the George W. Bush years. In the past few decades, we've also seen Brazilian women surpass Brazilian men as the majority in Brazil's universities, as we see from this report. So this is to say that uh, the possibility of improving one's life has improved much in the last 20 years where I, I just remember seeing this myself. Um, my first few years traveling to Brazil, I, I, I reported on this, like I did not see many black Brazilians driving cars. I didn't see many black Brazilians even at the airports. And, but since, uh, the administration of Lula da Silva, when he took office in 2003, now, you know, that Lula spent eight years in office, eight, 2003 to 2010. His handpicked successor took office and stayed in office for six years before they uh, basically impeached her on some. It's I'm not going to say trumped up charges. Some people see it as trumped up. Other people say there was legitimacy as to why they removed her from office. And then we had an interim. Then there was an interim president, Michelle Temer, uh, Temer. Then uh, in a, a far right wing extremist, Jair Bolsonaro, spent four years in office. And in the recent election, uh, Lula is coming back to the presidency uh, as of January 1st, uh, 2023. So it's going to be curious to see what's going to happen with Lula going back to office. But the point is, during his administration, a lot of studies just show that a lot of Brazilians were able to reach middle class status. I mean, whatever that means. 
some people believe that the uh, the government started moving the goalposts to make it seem like more people came out of poverty. But there's still a lot of people living in poverty in Brazil, but there's also a lot more people uh, getting access to universities and middle class lifestyles. Um, that's something that I directly saw during my travels, just between the years 2000 and 2008, I saw a dramatic change and uh, more particularly more black Brazilians being able to climb out of the poverty that had, you know, had a grip on their family for years, decades. Some people could say all the way back to slavery. So now we have a situation where Brazilian women are actually majority in a university. So they have this opportunity. So we can't, again, I think this speaks to the fact that, well, we can't necessarily say that these women are just desperate to get out of the country. There are some, there are many, I could even say, but I, I think that access to a middle-class lifestyle has helped a number of Brazilians over the last few decades. So I, I can partially believe the idea like, yeah, there are a lot of Brazilians who want to come to the U.S., but I've talked to enough people to say, look, everybody's not in love with the United States. So anyway, that's what this report here is saying. Women are the majority in Brazilian universities, but they have more difficulty finding a job afterwards. I just really um, discovered this idea of student loan debt. And it's, it's something that I really didn't know about. It's something that I read about a few days ago. And then uh, one of my friends down in uh, Mina Jedi told me, it was like, you know, Mark, a lot of people are going in debt trying to go to college. That's, that's something that I have to get into because um, I wasn't familiar with that. Um, maybe in a future article, I have to touch a little bit on that, but yeah, so women outnumber the men in the universities now, um, along with women, we have seen a huge increase in the number of black Brazilians and specifically black women going to college as these reports demonstrate in my years traveling and living in Brazil, I can say that the situation of black Brazilian women and men has improved greatly in comparison to the 20 years before I started visiting the country. Um, from what I saw, like up until the mid nineties and the late nineties, even you just didn't see many clearly black people going to the university. Now there was a report that, that came out a few years ago that was basically saying black people are now the majority in Brazilian universities. But again, as I've said in numerous videos is difficult to say how people define what is black in Brazil. So I have, uh, I've seen African-Americans throughout, you know, living out all over the country, you know, Bahia, Rio, Sao Paulo. And a lot of people have connections with the university. I've been on numerous uh, Brazilian university campuses and I don't see a black majority. You know, I mean, if you can consider the lightest quote unquote pardu mixed or brown person who some of those people are on the cusp of looking white, then you could say there's a, uh, you know, there's a black, uh, would you say a black majority on university campuses, but that's something that I think is a little bit exaggerated actually. But I can say that the the presence of black people on, at, on Brazilian camp college and university campuses, it has grown uh, immensely over the last two decades. But like African-Americans, Afro-Brazilians still have a long ways to go. So this highlight, this uh, headline is saying, Black women are today the, the largest group in the public universities of the country. Um, this advance occurred along with affirmative action policies and the vulnerability of black boys helps to explain the phenomenon. The vulnerability of black boys, that's, you know, as I've said before, focusing so much on race, I need to go back and look at just the social structure because along the way we've seen how the system is kind of left behind black Brazilian men and boys so much so that, you know, it's an often cited statistic that says every 23 minutes, a, a young black male is murdered in Brazil. And the statistics are showing that the vast majority of the people being slaughtered and murdered, assassinated and killed in Brazil are of the masculine gender. I mean, there's just no way around that. And it specifically seems to be affecting the black population. The, the young people say between the ages of 15 and 35, maybe. Um, one of these days I have to get into those because I've said it before that the number of murders you see in Brazil every year is just, it's, it's just something hard to conceive, to, to perceive actually. Um, in terms of why black men are making an announcement about their travels or desires to travel, 
honestly, I don't see the message being targeted at black American women. It is targeting other black American men and alerting them of the options of going overseas. The message hasn't and won't change regardless of how black American women feel. If the feeling continues to be, you don't need no man, you can do bad all by yourself, or you are strong and independent, there should be no need to make such videos announcing this. The fact is, passport bros make their videos directed at other black men, while the videos by the women are directed towards these men. I am not mad about black men getting their passports and paying to play overseas. I just truly want to help these men to see logic and reason. A man that's looking to marry a foreign woman went to an event wearing a top hat. Brother, are you serious? You look ridiculous. And you're clearly undesirable, but I'm sure that you've blamed black women for your lack of what it takes to attract them. But you want to go overseas where women are unaware culturally of your nature and pay them to pretend while you give them nothing but money and a wet behind. They aren't marrying these women. The men in this movement are largely undesirables or men that want to use a woman freely without her giving any pushback. No, I'm not mad that certain men have decided to go out of the country looking for their next victim. I'm completely okay with that. Clearly undesirable. Well, similar to my previous comments, I'd have to disagree as I know at least eight African-American men who are married to Brazilian women. Some moved to Brazil while others brought their wives back to the U.S. Blame black women for lack of what it takes to attract them? Again, have to respectfully disagree. Again, it's a matter of numbers. One, if most black American men earn an average salary and most black American women want a man that earns above average, then these men have no way to reach these women. As I said, there is a small percentage of black men who earn six figures. And if women feel that they are settling, it makes no sense to go after what you can't have. Two, for many black men, attracting a woman that they consider to be an eight or above is a tough and oftentimes expensive task. In Brazil, there are millions of beautiful women, and with an American dollar, he can live larger than he can in the U.S., even if he only stays part of the year there. That's a no-brainer. Now, in terms of not getting any pushback, this is a major misconception about Brazilian women that I must address. More than two months ago, a Black Brazilian friend of mine who lives in the city of Belo Horizonte, which is located in the state of Minas Gerais in southeastern Brazil, he called me up after having watched a video of two Black American men discussing Brazilian women. Um, this guy is pretty familiar with the Black American manosphere. Um, there's a up and growing uh, manosphere going down in Brazil, and I'm loving some of the conversations that's happening there as well. But he, he called me up, and you, I could tell that he was a little bit pissed about what he had seen in a video. He saw a video, I can't remember the name of it. But it was two African-American males talking about Brazilian women. And he just called me up and he says, Marcus, you need to make a video about Brazilian women because most American guys don't really know anything about them. In his view, according to the videos he watched, many black American men think of Brazilian women as just quiet, easygoing, docile type women. Um, <laughs> so take a look at this picture it says, uh, are you a controlling wife? He continued, dude. I am Brazilian, and I know these women. Brazilian women are mandonas, he said. The word mandona means bossy. He went on to say that all of the women in his family were mandonas. They bossed their husbands around and ran the households. So they don't really know. So they really don't know anything about this, speaking about uh, Black American men. There are plenty of articles to support his position. Consider this. One study found that in Brazilian households, women influence important aspects of men's lives. According to the study, 86% of Brazilian men said that their wives or partners affect the food they eat, 82% of the products they consume, 77% of their clothing, 69% of the car or motorcycle used by the family, and 56% of the technology products used. There's a lot more where that came from, so suffice it to say, Labeling a Brazilian woman as a pushover is clearly a mistake. So what else are women saying that I need to address? Let's get into that. 